Hi there everyone, welcome back. This is a part two of the uh, uh, Practical 6 uh, run through and um, I still have a bit of flu so please, you know, very sorry about that. You might hear a bit of sniffling. Um, unfortunately, that's just a case of having the flu so there's a bit of a sniffling on my side. Um, so let's quickly have a look at our practical. So this is where we essentially stopped during our first video and um, you were st also still required to do uh, this section here um, go to Vula and you were supposed to do the tests and, and, and quizzes and then open up that assessment um, but in essence what I want to show you now is actually we're going to go into, uh, into QGIS um, there's just one thing before I do that that I quickly want to show you um, we're going to run through this um, as well. I'm going to show you uh, these different features. Uh, but the one thing I quickly want to show you, which I think is fairly important, is, is this one here. Uh, you would have noticed in the uh, folder um, there is a KML file. And you might be wondering, well, where exactly is this KML file um, from? I mean, what, what is a KML file? Um, and a KML file is basically just called a, um, a keyhole markup language file and generally speaking they are generated in in Google Earth so if you use Google Earth uh, or Mercator I think also Marble might use it as well um, but if you use KMLs um, you most likely you've been using Google Earth so let's just quickly have a look at at, um, at Google Earth right so here we've got Google Earth um, the big thing with Google Earth is it is not a GIS. So um, where obviously QGIS is a GIS, it has a database connected to it, uh, you can feed it information. Um, Google Earth is still not there yet. Um, so from my perspective, uh, I would still consider Google Earth a mapping program. But there, there are a number of really interesting features that you'll find in Google Earth um, that actually makes it also a fairly powerful program. So let's just quickly see here. So for instance, here we've got Africa. Um, in Google Earth, you can obviously move this around. Um, let's just go to a particular site. All right, so we'll zoom in. Um, and this is a site that um, I'm not going to go into too much detail on, but uh, you'll notice that I've got a couple of points here. So these are a couple of points um, and all these points, if you click on them for instance, um, there are other points there and I've also attached images to, to these points. Um, and this is in Google Earth. So some of the functionality that you might see for, for, for QGIS or a, um, a, a GIS program, you're starting to see something similar happening in um, Google Earth, but it's still not a GIS program, it's still just a mapper. Um, one of the other things that you can also do is obviously add place marks um, so you can actually generate that vector data. So for instance here we can add a polygon, we can make a polygon, um, we can even add a, a polyline, right? So these are all vector um, information. Um, and the key thing that I wanted to quickly show you is that if I save this, so I say save place as, um, it will save it either as a KMZ file or it will save it as a KML file. So keyhole a markup language file or a KMZ file. The KMZ file is actually an archived version of the KML file. So a KMZ file might be smaller um, because it's, it actually contains um, a lot more information. Right, so I just quickly wanted to show you that just so that you can have an idea of where exactly this KML file comes from. So a KML file is essentially um, what you'll get from Google Earth um, and you can generate it from Google Earth. So um, one thing that you might want to do is if you're working on, uh, on a site or you're working on a project and you've got your GPS coordinates, you can actually put them onto Google Earth um, initially just to see where they actually plot. Then thereafter you can actually take those layers or you can take that information, uh, retrieve it and then create a shape file from those those um, specific um, uh, files. All right. so the other thing I quickly want to show you here is the Sutton Who uh, data set. 
Um, and obviously here you can see the Defense of Britain project, and that is the KML file. So uh, that is something that you can open up in, in Google. Um, you'll notice there's the project file. So when you save your QGIS uh, project as a project, it will generally be as a project file, and it will keep everything together, um, what you've been working on. Um, and you can retrieve it, you can retrieve that information at a later stage. Uh, here you'll notice there is, um, for, ins for instance, a series of, of, of different files. They've all got the same name, but they've got, the, they've got a different extension. So here we've got highwaterpolyline.dbf, uh, prj, sbn, etc., etc. Um, the one that you'll be using is this one here, .shp, which is the shape file. However, in actual fact, this whole, all these different documents or all these different files are the shape file. They all make part of the shape file, right? Um, each one of these just have a very different um, function. Each one actually has a different function. So, for instance, the DBF file is really also what's called um, a dbase um, table, and all your attribute information goes in there. Um, uh, another example would be, let's say, uh, SPX. Um, you s basically, there you store, similar to the SHX one, you store spatial information in there. Now, it's not really that important for you guys to know the differences between these various different files, but I, I just wanted to bring it up so that you are aware that A, all of these files, all of these different exten extensions are all the shape file. Um, and the one that we use is going to be this one, .shp. Um, right, so I just wanted to quickly make that distinction so you can understand that. And then also, obviously, what exactly is meant by the KML file. So we're back at OpenQGIS. So we're quickly going to go and do that. Go to Desktop, right, and uh, depending on where it is on your computer, We'll go here to QGIS. Um, obviously, I have QGIS 3.26 um, installed, as well as QGIS PISA, which is 3.10. Um, now, when you open it, you'll actually notice there are a couple of files here. Um, the browser um, confused a lot of students. Um, and the browser is not the one that you're going to be using to actually make your maps. Uh, the browser is actually um, the application where you are able to look at your shape files and look at the attribute tables. Um, it, it's very much a way for you to verify the information. It's a it's a it's a more convenient way than actually opening it up in the desktop and looking at your attribute data uh, at your attribute tables. Um, then there's also a designer, and the designer is there to actually help you create really impressive looking uh, maps. So I want you to just know about this distinction in, in these very different um, applications that do come with QGIS. So the one that we want is going to be QGIS Desktop um, 2.10.1. And you'll see a similar thing if you're using the 3.26. You'll notice there's the desktop and there's also the designer. What's fallen away in the newer version of QGIS is actually your um, your browser has fallen away because the browser has now been incorporated into your desktop. So once you've opened up QGIS, this is what you'll generally see. And I quickly just want to go over a few points here. So for instance, um, one of the things that might help you is to actually hover over these buttons and what I mean by hover over the buttons um, and unfortunately it's not showing up on the video for some reason but when you use the mouse you, you don't click anything and you just hover over that uh, particular button it will actually tell you what that specific button is doing um, in this case it it uh, pops up on my side as pan map but on the video it's not showing up and it's uh, it's an issue that I have with OBS it for some reason it won't show up um, then on this side, you'll notice here's one. This one is one is called Add Vector Layer, and this is actually the one that you need. This is the one that you're going to be adding your vectors um, with. The one below it is going to be Add Raster Layer. The one right at the on on this side here 
this is where you're adding a new shapefile. So you are actually creating a shapefile. And this will probably be in our next uh, practical where we're going to create our own shapefile um, and we're going to create our own data. Essentially create our own data set. So let's see what we're supposed to be doing um, in this practical. So we've got a nice little picture here. Um, basically gives you the overview of what I've just um, just shown you. Um, there's this uh, tells you a little bit about the certain who um, data set and there are those buttons so when you hover over those buttons in the application it should give you a little prompt that tells you what exactly that button is um, the one that looks like that with a little V shape and a little green little um, icon there that's the one that adds your information but before we can do anything we first have to do a little bit of maintenance um, and this is really what this is all about um, <clears throat> essentially what's happening here is that um, the the data set that we have for uh, Sutton Who actually uses information from sourced from very different sources. Um, that sounds funny. <laughs> Basically, what it means is you've taken information that might have different um, coordinate systems. It might use different projections, um, and you want to be able to plot them together. So what QGIS will do is it will take all this information and it will do the necessary calculations to allow for all these various different, in different information types with different projections to be plotted at exactly the same point. So essentially, so essentially what we want to do is basically follow the recipe as given um, within your uh, project practical brief. Um, so here we have um, in the project drop-down menu, so we're going to go there, project drop-down menu, there's project, go all the way down to project properties, and you should be able to see this window here. And then it says select general, so general is already um, selected in this case. And then you just make sure that the, the save paths is going to be relative. Then also, you want to go to CRS, and you want to see, or at least check, the box to enable on-the-fly CRS um, transformations. So all that does is, is that it allows QGIS to use information from, all, from, from different sources that might be using different coordinate systems. So these are all different coordinate systems that we have here. In South Africa, we use WGS84, or at least a version of WGS84. So once you've done that, um, you can click Apply. Press OK. Once you've done that, obviously now you have to save your project. So you go Save As, and you can actually save as, save your project. So for this case, I'm going to call this one, right, I'm saving it. So what we need to do now is, from our um, from the PDF, from the Prac PDF, is we actually need to import um, our data. You'll notice that we have to actually import our vector data. Now, just to tell you a little bit about vector data, so vector data, uh, generally speaking, um, there are a few types. There are um, points, so point data, and point data you can generally use to show um, cities or you might use it to show um, specific points um, maybe an artifact etc then the other one would be uh, lines or polylines um, and usually you might use a polyline or a line to, sh to showcase a road or you might be able to showcase uh, a river um, and then the other one is polygons and polygons are very useful because it essentially means you can make um, a uh, basically a polygon and you can even um, maybe map out a specific area that might be your study area so coming back to QGIS we're going to add the vector layer um, in this case we're going to go add vector layer um, it's going to ask us well where what data do we want to import so source data set go to browse um, and the first one we want to add is going to be our high water polyline. When we open it, press open, um, and it's going to draw, basically draw um, the outline 
of uh, of the UK. Now you can actually change the colors here if you want. So if you double click here, um, you might want to make that black. Um, you can make it thicker, um, or you can make it a little bit smaller. So here in this case, uh, this really depends on your creativity. And okay, and you can apply, press OK, and now we have our information and we have our polyline there. So the next one that we want to add is we actually want to add the Defense of Britain um, KML. So remember, the KML is um, a file that we're getting from Google Earth. So we go Add Vector, go Browse, right? And we look for that specific um, file, in this case, Defense of Britain. You open it up. And you just wait for it to load. And in this case, what you get is you're actually getting a number of layers. So remember, in Google Earth, you're already allowed to create a, a vector data. You're already allowed to create points, um, polygons, lines, etc. And you can name them. So you can already create a small um, data set. So similarly, this is actually what's been what's happened is that someone made a small data set, and now they can actually use the data set and import specific layers from that data set from Google into QGIS. We're going to look for those specific ones. Let's look for them. Um, pull box, cantilever, pull box. So let's see, let's take remove type W and this one. So let's see what happens when we add these ones. Press OK. So those, so these points come up on our uh, on our screen. All right, so we've actually imported, we've imported our data, and we've imported our our points. But there's just one more layer that we need to add, and that layer is going to be the last one, and that is actually. Let's just quickly make sure that's the shape file. This is going to be the the county um, boundaries. And so it shows up your country boundaries. Now this is one of those things where you have to be mindful. So if you have a polygon um, like this, if it's lying on top of everything else, uh, you're not going to see what's happening um, to all the information that's underneath that polygon. So you actually have to try to move this polygon down. Or oh, let's rather do it this way. So you move it down. So in this case, I've now moved it down. Um, the high water polyline is on top of it, as well as the uh, the point data as well. Now I don't like the green color because it's not really there's not really a lot of contrast between that and the green from from these ones. So I'm going to change it. So I double click on it, and I am actually going to make it um, maybe like a nice little yellow or brown. Let's make it. Let's see how that looks. Apply, right? So we've got that, um, and the pull box I can also change if I want to. Um, I can make it a pentagon. I can make it a star um, or a triangle. But I think I'm going to leave it as as it is. Um, there's enough contrast between them, or there's enough contrast so I can actually see it. The blue one I think I might have to change a little bit. So I think I'm going to change that color and I'm going to make it red instead supply so now I can actually see where those specific points are so <clears throat> once we've done that this is um, about halfway through your prac so now we're going to use the query so you want to use the GIS to ask specific questions so the next item on the agenda is to actually add some labels so that we can actually know which which one of these counties what are these counties Okay, and we're going to do that quickly. So, this polygon has all that information, and um, I can actually show you. If I open up the attribute table, it actually shows me all the different um, counties. Right, but having it in an attribute table is one thing. But having it on the map is a completely different thing. And that's really what I want. I want it to be on the map. So 
how do I do that? Well, I go all the way down, go to uh, properties. Um, I make sure that under I'm under labels. I want to label this layer, and I want to label it not by its description, but rather by its name. And when I click apply, it should show up our labels. So now we can know um, there's Yorkshire, uh, Durham, Durham. We've got Norfolk, Suffolk, Essex, uh, etc. <clears throat> so all those labels are actually now added to our uh, to our data set. So we're now going to do this, this next part, um, and that is actually um, just doing a very simple query. So let's say, for instance, you want to highlight one specific county. Um, it can be Sutherland, or it can be Suffolk, or, or Devon, or Cornwall. Um, and the way you'd go about it is you go to Layer, you go to Filter, and you basically have a query builder. So we can go name, um, and we can say equal to. And um, let's say, for instance, um, instead of Suffolk, we go for Devon. And we test it. And there we go. So now it only shows up the county of Devon. Um, we can do we can do the same for um we can maybe say and um name equal um suffolk and let's see what happens so i mean one of the things that i'd like you to do as well is to actually play with it now obviously you're probably wondering well why did it do that it said and well, AND is a Boolean operator. Um, and generally, when you use a Boolean amp operator, AND doesn't mean uh, one object and another object together. Uh, that's actually not what it does. Um, it actually means the complete opposite. So what you want to do is you want to go for OR. So if I go TEST, both of them will come back. So it's looking for these two, and it then highlights Devon and Suffolk. All right, so I'm just going to clear that. So that's just uh, just a quick intro to to Boolean um, operators. So you can play with that actually, and if I were you, you know, see what kind of different uh, Boolean operators you can put together um, using the operators if, um, like, equals to, um, etc. And you can actually build up quite a nice little um, complicated uh, query. But obviously, life shouldn't be that that difficult <clears throat> there has to be an easier way to uh, go about it uh, so we're going to use something that's a little bit easier and that is actually spatial query so with spatial query uh, you'll notice um, if I hover over over this button here it shows up spatial query and so I'm going to open up spatial query and it actually asks me a few things um, <clears throat> it says select source features from well I want it to be from the boundary line um, historic uh, layer and then I also I want whatever um, is in whatever these things are if they are contained within any of these specific counties they should actually um, pop up and that is really what I want, if that makes sense, right? So, um, let's just quickly do that. We apply. So this is what we get up. So it tells us that there are 20 selected geometries, and those are the ones that contain this specific uh, feature. And we can actually, um, I think we can create a new uh, selection. So we create, right, so we can create a new layer and we apply, we close, and then it's essentially showing us 
where those features are those specific features and in this case it was actually we're looking for um, pillbox type FW322 now you can go even a step further and you can choose maybe three four different layers and then you do the same exercise and then see what you get um, as I've said many times when you're dealing with uh, with an application like QGIS um, one of the best ways and easiest ways to learn it is actually to play with it so to go through these features to take a data set and to just play with the data set so much in the same way that I was playing with a query setting um, just creating a, a, a boolean um, a query you can do the same thing and just see well what does this do and what does this do um, if I make like or if I make um, um, equal sign and similarly with a query with a spatial query button you can do the same thing you can play around with it and see what what you come up come up with so ultimately it really boils down to um, the questions that you're asking um, in this case my question would have been um, is there a way for me to show where these specific items in type FW322 are maybe I'm a military historian and, and I want to know where these specific sites are so that I can go and visit those sites so I hope hopefully um, this uh, this practical um, demonstration was helpful to you I guess the other thing you want to do now is you just want to uh, um, save it right so you save your project or you can save an image um, and then import that image into uh, into Word. My advice would be to actually use print screen. So uh, go print screen and then open up Word and then uh, paste um, into Word because what it will do is it will actually show everything. So it will show us what uh, layers you use um, and it will show you what you that you've actually created another um, uh, shape file that shows the specific um, 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 elements all right so hopefully this helped you a lot um, definitely add some comments under the video um, when you can or send me comments in whatsapp um, and this is uh, practical six but a slightly different take on it thank you very much for watching and chat to you later